um, well, first of all, thank you so much for accepting our invitation, mm -hmm. for sitting here, and uh, thank you so much for your film, which is so, uh, I think, tells a lot about the time where it was uh, shot, but also it's so deeply uh, uh, unique, uh, personal, and, and challenging <laughs> also. Uh, we have we have the time to discuss the film, but be, maybe before that, I think it would be good in order to give some uh, context and perspective to everyone to um, uh, go back in time and um, understand first of all that you shot this film when it was 1968. Right. You were September, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not 1969, no. as it is mentioned in the first uh, uh, shot. That's a mistake. Weirdly enough. You are 28, so this was your first film as a filmmaker, but you were already uh, working in the film industry, let's mm -hmm. say, as, a, as an editor. As a film editor, oh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. can you tell about that? Oh, yeah. With yeah, so as I said, uh, yeah, I was a film editor with uh, mostly Eric Romer. Um, I got uh, La Boulangère de Monceau, Nadja à Paris, and La Collectionneuse. And Paris Vupar, which is uh, one of the last films of the new wave, with a director like uh, Godard, Chabrol, Rouche, Jean-Daniel Collet, and um, Eric Romer. How, how did you start editing? Because I, I think you didn't even study film, actually. No. <laughs> no. I start to uh, be a photographer, assistant, also camera, and then one day, um, I think, uh, one of the editors of some film said, do, do you like to be my assistant? And I was very clever, I was very, um, I cut film in real, uh, you know, um, pellicule, uh, in, um, in celluloid. So, um, so I start to do that, and I was, Lucky to, to work with uh, Jean Daniel Paulet and, and Eric Romer on Méditerranée. Uh, then, when I become uh, chef editor. On Méditerranée, which yeah. is, yeah, it's, it's amazing because that is a, but you know, that is a film make, which is about. It's, it's, um, uh, Méditerranée is a, it's a film on montage. I did, he did the picture. I mean, I did all the soundtrack. And of course, we. Adjust after the music was recorded and uh, had a beautiful, um, actually, commentary by uh, Philip Solers. And um, that was a really challenging film for an editor, you know, because you can create with such a genius as Jean Daniel Paulet, which is not very well um, known. It's a, a bit too forgotten, I think. And then became um, involved with uh, Sylvina Bosonas later on with uh, Zanzibar. You have to tell the audience. Yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. But maybe be before we, we go into that uh, Zanzibar story, so you start, uh, uh, you become an editor, but having zero experience in, in editing. So you become an assistant. but. In, in an interview, you mentioned that you felt that he is very comfortable editing because you knew uh, uh, how to uh, to um, to use a sewing machine. You know how to sew yeah. and to make like to, to work with fabric. I and was work. I was using to uh, do my clothes when I was like 15, 16. So with the film, I was very. Um, it was easy for me to perform, you know, to and to work quickly, you know, because uh, it's. For me, film editing is like you make a costume, you know, to the film. I mean, the soundtrack is the uh, doublure and the picture is the, the same thing, you know, it's the same rapport of, uh, <laughs> I think. So that's why I was very, um, um, it was great that I, I uh, as a seamstress, <laughs> then a film editor. <laughs> So anyhow, <laughs> so you you mostly worked with uh, directors uh, connected to the Nouvelle Vague. Yes. Plus mm -hmm. uh, Jean Renoir, I think. Also. No, Jean Renoir has saved the film because 
the film um, producer want to cut it, and I refused to cut it. I was assistant. I was doing a, a stage, I don't know how to say it, in a laboratory. Internship? Yeah. And um, the producer came and uh, um, it was Le Caporal, I don't know, he, he made it after, um, uh, in the 60s, you know, with the castle. And, and then I refused to call it, you know, and then I called Jean Renoir, the editor called Jean Renoir. And uh, because they were stock shot into the film, he allowed us to cut in the stock shot of the film. So I was very uh, kind of recognized in the film editing business. As I said, the film of Jean Renoir, but no, I never <laughs> work. Because as an editor, you refused to cut. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, one day, you meet uh, Sylvina Boissonnas. Mm -hmm. That was in March. Was, I mean, was I was lucky to cut the first film of uh, the Zanzibar group, which is the film of Serge Bar. Which, which was not yet the Zanzibar group. No, it, it was a name. Détruisez-vous, yes. And Détruisez-vous was um, the first film that uh, uh, actually is a uh, brother with a banker who uh, decided to produce the film. But when he saw the film, long shot, a revolutionary commentary and all that, he completely um, laissé tomber, quoi, le truc. He refused to go on, and then... Yeah, and then she, she said, no, it's great. This, this type of thing should be more and more. And she, and then she asked me, she said, why don't you make a film? I give you all the money, you know. And what it was great with Sylvie Nabossonas is that you didn't have to have a script, you didn't have to have known actor, and on top of it, uh, we could, this film is beautifully shot by André Benfeld, who was shot in 35 millimeter. So we were very lucky to have all this kind of, because my film is like a reportage, you know, it's like, um, there is no really, but the fact that it's uh, in 35 millimeter give it a kind of, uh, I think, the kind of um, language other than uh, a documentary. It's, it's a documentary about a woman falling in love or doing all kind of things in Barcelona. <laughs> but actually, all the Zanzibar films have uh, those qualities. They, they are, most of them, like 99% of them, they, they are 12 to 15 films in total, and they are all shot in a, in a 35 millimeter, uh, mm -hmm. beautiful photography, Black and white, and which is which is quite impressive and uh, um, amazing for the time because at that time almost everyone was working in 16 millimeter. Right. I mean, uh, Only the big production were uh, 35 millimeter. Yeah. That's yeah. So that we were very lucky. <laughs> but you you especially uh, insisted on on, on sh shooting your films on 35 oh, yeah. millimeter. Yeah, I like that format. It's beautiful. I mean. And this uh, copy is good, huh? With, uh, they did a wonderful, because uh, it's 52 years old, I mean, 55 years old, <laughs> the film. Can you tell more about uh, Silvina Boissonas and the group of people who, who gathered uh, around her? And how many, how many of you uh, were there? What happened there? Yeah, so it's pre what happened is that actually the group was formed by Olivier Mosse, which is a a painter, he came back from New York and um, he showed us a uh, uh, separate film he made at uh, uh, the Warhol factory. And we were very impressed. And I think the Zordibar group was formed around Olivier Mosse and uh, Daniel Pomerol, um, also uh, Pierre Clementi. And uh, I think it's interesting to have uh, uh, not only technicians like me or uh, and Garel, of course, uh, Philippe Garel, who made most of the film in the, uh, during the Zanzibar period. And Sylvina came out of the blues because actually uh, Olivier knew her and uh, she said, uh, voila, anybody who have any kind of... Uh, 
project in film and uh, in um, music, uh, she gave check. <laughs> How much you need? Twenty thousand dollar. Okay, twenty thousand. The equivalent in France, you know. So she was uh, actually very, very, very rich and very uh, generous. A bit like um, the same uh, woman who. La Comtesse de Noailles, je crois, non That was uh, uh, supporting Buñuel and Dali uh, when they made uh, L'Age d'Or and all that. I think there is a kind of a... Well, where did the money come from, actually? Because it sounds like a fairy tale. So. Well, she inherited, you know, her parents, Sil uh, <laughs> Sylvie Boissonas, and her father, where um, they had... I don't know, you know, banks, real estate in Paris, and uh, golden mine in South Africa. <laughs> very, very rich. Actually, without um, them and their um, mecenas, uh, the Centre Pompidou wouldn't exist. He, but they were extremely, um, um, they didn't, you know, nobody knew uh, exactly, uh, that they were giving so much money to the art and to, uh, and Sylvina inherited part of that money and she was, actually she said, oh, my money comes from workers that work in gold mine and they die at the age of 30, so I must get rid of it. So she was like, you know, ready to want to transform herself and in May 68, it was <laughs> just the right period. <laughs> yeah, but that's also really interesting. So this is spring 1968. Uh, Patrick Deval, uh, who is another member of the Zanzibar uh, yeah. group, uh, wrote this about, about the time. Le, I will read it in French because it's, it's in French. Uh, Les films présentés sous le label Zanzibar ont été fomentés autour de mai 68, avant, prophétiquement, pendant, factuellement, après, mélancoliquement. <laughs> C'est joli. Mm -hmm. Actually, almost none of this film is like explicitly uh, political, which is not completely true, but yeah. It's mostly like a literary uh, cinema, and um, uh, a cinema which embodies these political uh, uh, questions, political issues into the form, no? Could we say something yeah, like that? The thing is, we were um, not against uh, New La Nouvelle Vague, but we were want to do something totally different, and also we believe that this is our last film, our first, our last film, whatever. We want to change the grammatical, <laughs> and um, and I think the fact that we were called together, you know, is, uh, we influence each other to go ahead and do. Um, and like the fois, there is no screenplay, you know, it's like, uh, it's like firm. And actually, I can remember one one shot to the other, uh, you know, the, uh, it's like uh, each like, um, Russian little box. With, with, uh, no, the, this period was uh, really great because actually we were not doing any kind of commercial, you know, we didn't have to have this, so we, it's like uh, shooting a Polaroid, you know, in a way. And we have no limit to, um, for the money, like Vit, which is a great film, I think, by, uh, by Daniel uh, Pobrol, yeah, you should see that film, you should really, so it's amazing. And a film by Sylvina Boissonas too, but it's not, um, which is a film which is now in impossible to, to see because it. she doesn't want yeah. to show it anymore. Yeah. Um, can you tell? Can you tell us a bit more now about the foie? How how did you make it? I mean, where did you make it? Uh, how why why and how how is it that it is like it is? Well, I want to get away from um, the group Zanzibar for, <laughs> because there was like. Uh, uh, the joker of all trade, you know, I was assistant, I was actor in Asifal, I was all this. And also to tell you something very personal, 
My boyfriend, uh, Patrick Deval, cheat on me, so... <laughs> with, uh, and, um, you know, he's 68, everybody sleep with everybody, but me, I was in love with him, so I said, I go to Barcelona and I find a man and I shoot a film and this, this is a letter to you also, to show you. Uh, and he came to Barcelona and he almost stopped the, the shoot and then after that I said, no, no, no. That. So it's very personal and at the same time it's, a, I don't know, a little bit of liberation of my uh, statue of uh, a cheated woman. <laughs> It is definitely uh, the film of a woman, you, and but also the film of an editor. And um, I'm yeah, I was revolting against also the fact that many times you shoot, you have so many shots, you know, and you discover that maybe you should make it work the other way, you know, make uh, show the public uh, two fois the take, uh, sometimes it's three times, like the the scene in the. <coughs> in the pharmacy, uh, yeah, it was all, uh, you know, like um, an exercise, style exercise, exercise de style. Yeah, and also maybe a, um, a rejection of uh, some of the, the rules in, in, the, yeah. in, in of editing. The grammatical rule. <laughs> but, so you were working in the film industry as, as an editor, and then, uh, Filmmaker was not your position, officially. But I know, so I was a film editor, really. So and this film shocked a lot, of yeah, course. Oh, really? After that, I have difficulty to find work. Mm -hmm. And I went to, uh, to America. I went to uh, live like a hippie in America. Well, when was that? 69. Uh, end of 68, beginning of 69. Yeah. But I'm, I'm curious, it's the first time you see the film? Yeah. I am. Nobody has seen it before. Maybe they have questions. Of course, yeah, yeah. I also have plenty <laughs> have of questions. questions. <laughs> take, take. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> or in a minute, if you want. <laughs> ah, okay. What was the Spanish poem, the, 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 the text on Espanol à la fin? Ah, oui, c'est... Um, yes, sorry, the Spanish poem. Yes, I'm sorry, it's not translated. I have to translate it. Uh, de la Barca. Donc, uh, comment il s'appelle déjà? Uh, Calderon, non? Ca Calderon, de, Cal Calderon de la Barca. Uh, vita, la, 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 life is a, uh, la vida es sueño. It's a beautiful text. I love it. It should be um, should be translated. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there were um, some thing in the film that um, have a little bit of uh, like uh, at the beginning he said uh, September uh, 69, 1969, which is wrong, which was shocking. Well, we talk about it before. Yeah. So, um, no, that was, uh, Zanzibar was very important because and that's all the film. Uh, every time we, f we finish a film, Henri Langlois will show it on a Friday night or Saturday night. So it was, uh, and then they were disparition because a group just, and uh, as you know, Serge Bar, uh, Maybe you, you, you should tell that story. Yeah. So that the group of you stayed together for a short time and then it's like... Then we explode. Yeah. I went to, with Patrick Duval, we went to America and, and then the group wanted to, to go to Zanzibar but get lost in the desert and some came back to Paris and only Serge Bar stayed. didn't come back. Yeah. He didn't come back and he... Um, he decided to become uh, a Muslim. Huh? A Muslim. A Muslim, yeah. To uh, convert. I mean, he was not. Uh, for me, he was taking a lot of drugs, and <laughs> now he's, he became 
a Muslim by, uh, I don't know, it's a easy God. Uh, uh, kind of um, mission to. And he lives in Lamec now, and he hasn't made any film since then. But he made three films uh, Détruisez-vous, um, Fun and Game, and you see, Et maintenant. Ouais. They are beautiful. I love uh, Fun and Games, but um, I think. Uh, you should, you should show it. Uh, You're right. Maybe all, all the Zanzibar films. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, I have a last question, and, and then maybe if, if some of you want to ask more questions to, to Jackie, uh, go ahead. But um, the film is from 1968, uh, the same year that uh, Chantal Ackerman uh, shoots uh, uh, Sotmaville. Then it, the film might... You might think also of Je tue L when you, when you see uh, De Foix, I think. Um, your film has been seen as uh, like one of the first feminist films. And in 1975, there is this uh, film theory uh, uh, journal, um, Camera Obscura, Camera Obscura yeah. US, devoting uh, their full first issue to only two films, mm -hmm. one film by Yvonne Reiner and then De Foix, which De Foix. Like, studied in depth. Um, how do you how do you relate to that to the well to that you know as I told you before uh, my mother was a suffragist I mean I was really uh, uh, when I make the film I didn't I didn't think it was uh, a feminist film so t because for me uh, unconsciously uh, it became a feminist film because of the section where I'm naked where uh, um, you know, and at the beginning also, when I, I, I don't know, also the, the shot where I'm getting out of the screen, you know, all these are uh, part of, uh, but for me it was very unconscious. You know, when you make a film, you have, you have your own um, reference to a lot of things, but then when it's finished, it, it, it doesn't belong to you, and the public is the only one that can comment, can interpret. But they, they did a beautiful uh, work, uh, the group of uh, women in uh, San Francisco, Camera Obscura, is the number one uh, issue of the And uh, they analyze everything as a feminist film, mm -hmm. which is okay, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very, so very much okay. <laughs> yeah, but all the time you play with the representation of, 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 of yourself as a woman, but also expectations that we as spectators might have um, um, of, of a woman on the screen. And this, this comes like a few years, almost ten years, yeah, seven years before uh, Laura Mulvey uh, comes with the concept of the male gaze, etc. So it is mm -hmm. true that it, it is like pioneering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. okay. Questions? <laughs> Before? Yeah. One? Yes. Christophe, we have the time for one question, then... No. No? Okay. <laughs> you have, you have one question. Yes, I just have one question. Uh, at one moment, there is an extract uh, from a Spanish uh, movie, and I was just wondering if, if it was uh, an invention in your movie, or is it a real... Spanish pellicule. J'ai pas compris. Qu'est-ce que tu dis? Il y a une, réf <laughs> à, à un y a une moment, référence à un, un film espagnol. C'est la publicité euh, oui, électronique, la publicité, hein, lumineuse. Oui. C'est yeah. pas moi qui joue. It's not me that play. Hein. It's a real. Uh, it's a movie. real. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a real Spanish movie. I mean. Spanish movie uh, with a storyboard. I mean, uh, with a, okay. an affi une affiche. Uh, uh, it's that I stole it, you know, <laughs> in the street, you know. The last one, and then we... Yeah, question. Yeah, the last one, because then we need to open the doors for this uh, COVID, uh, aération, etc. <laughs> um, this might seem a bit trivial, but I think it's not so trivial in relation to what um, Olivier said about... Um, Sorry, what uh, Javier said about about knowledge and expectations. 
But there's a scene in the Ramblas, I think it may be, where the cameras, people are walking towards the camera, and several people, they look towards the camera, but they don't look into the lens, they look underneath the camera. Il regarde sous la la caméra, pas dans l'objectif. Il y a ce plan quand tu filmes les... Euh, tu filmes, tu filmes les Ramblas et il y, y a des gens qui ne euh, oui. regardent pas vraiment la caméra mais sous la caméra. Pourquoi oui, oui, est-ce qu'ils oui. regardent sous la caméra bah Parce qu'en en fait, uh, in fact, uh, I wanted to have uh, this kind of uh, aspect of uh, like a silent movie. Uh, and we put the camera higher and people didn't know exactly uh, what was going on, you know, what we were filming. And actually, with a very... Um, a wide angle, you could see them coming, and but they didn't. They, it's funny scene because actually they look really close to the camera and they are shot. <laughs> so, yeah, the idea was like Garel as well. They made he did a little bit before Le Revelateur, which is also a silent film. I wanted to put inside the, the film a lot of silent. Um, pictures, yeah. so it could be, um, you know, like a reminiscence of uh, when the man also is uh, down and uh, go down on the, on the hill with the white clothes, like Nosferatu. You know that. They were, you know, we were so free to invent a lot of, uh, at least me, uh, I don't know, the other, like as I said, uh, came from a, not a screenplay, but a, a writing by Georges Bataille. And that's, that's a film which is more um, um, kind of uh, uh, from a novel, you know, it's more intellectual, more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Et si vous avez encore des questions, if you have more questions, Jackie est là. Je suis désolé que cet entretien soit finalement si court ici, mais on peut continuer à discuter à l'extérieur. Oui. Et pour ceux qui veulent rester, donc à 21h, on enchaîne avec le deuxième film de ce programme qui est À nous deux, France, de Désiré Carré. Voilà. Merci.